try to motivate voters with the answers they deliver in Milwaukee, the site of the first GOP presidential debate of the election cycle, a debate hosted by Fox News. The debaters had to pass fundraising and polling tests set by their party in order to be among those to be questioned. The man leading the pack of hopefuls in every poll, as we've been reporting, won't be there. That one of many issues we're going to get into right now with political analysts from both sides of the aisle, Republican Tim Rosales and Democrat Brian Brokaw. Gentlemen, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Glad to have you here. Before we get to the debate itself, in relation to the candidate who won't be on the stage in Milwaukee tonight, former President Donald Trump, someone very close to him, his former lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, is supposed to be meeting today with Georgia authorities about the 2020 election interference case they were both just indicted in. So far, none of the things Trump's been indicted on seem to be having any major impact on his chances in this race. The latest Emerson College poll of likely GOP voters shows him only slipping like three percentage points in support since June now at like 56 percent. He's like 40 points ahead of the nearest challenger. So is tonight all about him and talking about him, even though he's not there, Tim? Well, uh, thank you very much. And no, I think that each of these candidates needs to articulate their vision uh, for what they see and what their policies or perspective would be on you know, being president of the United States. Any time that they waste on President Trump would really be a waste for these candidates because right now they're looking to to, to grow their share of the uh, of the percentage of, of Republican voters. So it really needs to be about them and they need to stretch their legs. Uh, so uh, I would not uh, anticipate any of them really talking about President Trump too much uh, if they want to uh, make that case. All right, Brian, now the Former president is going to be giving a taped interview with Tucker Carlson airing on Twitter tonight while all of this is going on. Do you think that his challengers are going to spend a lot of time talking about him? I mean, his absence from this effectively kills the debate. And what also kills the debate is the fact that most of that Republican field, with the exception of Chris Christie, won't even criticize the guy that they are running against and trying to dethrone. Uh, I mean, the, the Republican Party is still under the stranglehold of Donald Trump. And it's just fascinating to watch from my side of the aisle how these other candidates who ostensibly want that job are trying to run for it without uh, even being able to say a critical word of the former president. It's and, and by the way, every time he's indicted, his poll numbers seem to go up within the Republican primary electorate. So I honestly understand why they won't, but it's sure hard to win if you're not going to come at the guy leading the pack. Going back to the polls, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy is the only one that's been gaining, albeit a little bit, while others are shedding support. What is it about him that maybe is suddenly capturing some voter attention? What does that mean for the GOP? Is he offering anything for independence? And is tonight poised to be his breakout moment, Brian? It's interesting, and I've only recently started to pay attention to him as well. He's similar in my viewpoint to someone we've all long forgotten about, Andrew Yang, who ran on the presidential election on the Democratic side a few years ago. He seems to be a very thoughtful, intellectual uh, candidate. I don't agree with much of what he says, uh, but the fact that he is now on the heels of Ron DeSantis is fascinating to me. Uh, it will be interesting to see how he approaches the Trump question, whether he actually goes after the president. And the DeSantis leaked super PAC memo that came out last week hinted at this, that you know DeSantis uh, supporters think he, they need to go after uh, Ramaswamy and kick him down a notch. So he is definitely one to watch right now. I also think Chris Christie will be interesting to see how much he actually goes after Trump. The others, I don't know what their approach is, to be honest. Okay, Tim, what about Vivek? Well, I think he's a fresh, dynamic new face that people are getting to see, many for the first time. Uh, he is uh, rising in the polls. He is uh, gaining uh, some interest there from uh, Republican voters. And and this is really an opportunity for him uh, to articulate you know, his message in a, in, a, in a broader way. And I think uh, set himself apart from the pack, if you will. Really, the race tonight, and, 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 and I don't disagree with, with some of what Brian said, you know, the, the uh, debate as it sits tonight is about whether or not these candidates can really start to separate themselves from each other and start to be included in that kind of one, two, three uh, pack and and that start to really uh, evolve. And I think the the danger here is for Governor Ron DeSantis, who has been seen by 
uh, by many for a long time as the number two or really the person who can challenge, mm-hmm. you know, President Trump. But I think that, you know, he, that has kind of faltered in, in the last uh, you know few weeks or so. And so there's opportunity for some of these candidates who aren't as well known uh, to gain some traction. Okay. Uh, and I think that's a real danger for Governor Ron DeSantis. And that'll be interesting to see how he deals with that. All righty. American support for Ukraine is supposed to feature prominently in the questioning tonight. A week ago, President Biden asked Congress for $40 billion, part of which is for more aid for that country's fight against Russia. CNN's latest poll on the matter shows most Americans oppose authorizing additional funding for that effort. 55 percent of those polled against. But what's happening in Ukraine is bound up with our national security and our backing of that country so far. So how do candidates thread the needle tonight? Because no one wants to appear weak or on the side of jeopardizing our national security, right, Tim? Oh, absolutely. But I think what they can do is they can draw a contrast between how they would approach national security on issues like Ukraine, uh, China and others, and then the approach that the Biden administration is taking uh, and how the Biden administration in terms of authorizing this new funding, but yet uh, for Maui fire victims and you know some of these domestic issues that President Biden really has been asleep at the wheel uh, and and looking you know pretty aged in and in and also slow in his response. Okay. Uh, that part of it, I think, is a contrast that Republican voters uh, are going to go after, or Republican candidates are going to go after and are going to take tonight. All right, Brian. And how do these candidates address the Ukraine and the whole national security issue and the impact of that war on the safety of our country? That's a tricky one, especially for the Republicans, because there has been this obsession uh, started really by former President Trump with Vladimir Putin. And the Republicans have been often afraid to criticize anything that President Trump has ever stood for. Of course, we're just now hearing this breaking news about uh, the general who led the coup a couple of weeks ago, who now mysteriously went down in a plane crash today in Russia. And you know how that factors into, I don't know anything about the specifics of that, but it's sure is coincidental. And it's, so it's gonna be really interesting to see whether these Republicans, especially those like Nikki Haley, who have very strong national security credentials or others, whether they toe the Trump line or whether they're more in line with many of their even Senate uh, Republican colleagues who are standing with Ukraine in this mm-hmm. fight. So. Uh, that is a, another really interesting uh, fracture between some of the candidates and the former president as well. All righty, gentlemen, so much to talk about. We will have to see what does get asked and what those answers come in as tonight. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you very-